Hello everyone and welcome back to International Space Station Assembly and Kerbal Space Program with Realism Overhaul. In this video, unfortunately, we don't have the background sound because all this was done during a live stream and I didn't record separate audio tracks for my voice and for the background sound. It was all on the same track, so I had to delete all that, otherwise I can't do this voiceover. So a little bit of a flaw there this time, sorry about that. This is STS-119, the shuttle Discovery, bringing the S-6 truss uh, with its solar arrays to the Inter International Space Station. So finally, our International Space Station will sort of, at the macro level, at the wide scale, look complete, even though we still have a few modules to add. Uh, those modules are Poisk, uh, Tranquility with the Cupola, and uh, we will also have Leonardo, and um, we never put the exposed facility on, so we need the Kibo exposed facility and Rasvit as well. So those are the major modules remaining. After that, there is Beam, but that wasn't part of the original plan for the space station. And uh, there are also modules that were planned that have not actually been sent up. There's also docking adapters and such. So. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated. There are small components that we never did send up as part of these missions, uh, like stowage platforms and stuff like that. Uh, I may add those later if I get good models of them. And uh, I think that it's possible with the development of the Kibo exposed facility, if you will, getting that from the NASA model of the space station. I may try to get more of these components from that model and add them as well using a, a Kerbal inventory or attachment system. So here we are approaching the station and I am at this point at least getting practiced at this phase of it. Somebody during the live stream asked if I could control from inside. I think they were thinking of the SpaceX docking simulator thing, um, but we don't have any instrumentation. Uh, I have raster prop monitor in here, it just doesn't seem to work with the space shuttle model at the moment. Uh, so yeah, if I had that and we could control from the docking port, then the answer would be yes. Uh, at this point, we can't control from the docking port and I do not have interior views that would be useful. So the answer is no. Uh, we have to take a look at all the angles from the outside in order to dock. And it is painful, but it is what it is. So here we are and there we go. A good connection and here we go with the tugs the tugs also we cannot uh, just dock with like a docking alignment indicator because there's no uh, target reference point they just need to get there there's nothing to set the target as on these trusses or anything so anyway we need to get it on there it's a fairly heavy module but uh, not too bad and the tugs make quick work of it. I was concerned about the orientation of it. I don't know if it's right. You see there's a solar panel that's on top and on bottom and the one on top is either forward or backward. Um, anyway, I just put it on whichever way it worked and got the tugs back in. Hopefully it's right enough. Unfortunately, somehow the outer solar panel arrays are a different model than the inner ones. That is a flaw that occurred thanks to the first two trusses that I sent up. I accidentally used different models for the solar panels on each one. So we have sort of a mismatch there. As you can see, uh, somewhat different coloration. Basically the same length, but it's a little bit off as we extend these sails. I think maybe one is from CX Aerospace and the other is from the old Community ISS mod, I'm not sure. So, the shuttle departing. Job well done. And CS-119. Oh, uh, somebody had asked me um, to give the date and the details of the missions. That'll be done in a separate recap video. These videos are about my operations in building this. And then I'll compile all the missions together in sort of a complete ISS construction video in which instead of focusing on what I'm doing, I'll be focusing on what the missions were. So, and you know, I'll spend like a minute on each mission and uh, maybe it'll be a 20, 30 minute video on the 
International Space Station construction with all the details of the actual missions. And I'll only mention my own activities insofar as they don't match what the actual missions did. So that'll be that video. Um, yep. So here we are returning and you know this has been a constant issue for me. Uh, have we fixed some of our problems? Well, we're going to find out. One reason I don't control it manually is the flight path is so deceptive. You know, you might think that you're falling short or you're going long when you actually aren't if you just take a look at the flight path there. So it's good for KOS to control it so that it's doing the calculations properly. But I had tried to fix the things that I mentioned in the previous video about the reentry script and I accidentally introduced a typo. Uh, so we had two E's there, you can see on the entry pitch, and that caused it to fail and uh, caused us to pitch down a little bit early. Remember I told you that uh, we need to hold our nose up for a little bit longer. And since uh, in the transition to SAS it lost its, its pitch, we have the yaw problem. You can see it's sort of yawing off to one side. Um, that is the side effect of not holding your nose up for long enough. So I ended up having to control it and there will be further yaw problems as we go down. You can see here, side slip, serious side slip. I don't know if you can call it side slip when it's that far off, but anyway, it's a little bit rough, but trying to get a handle on it. And of course we're falling short because of all the side slip causing more drag. And we will land just past Tampa Bay, which is what we're flying over here. But at least we will end up over land. That's a good thing. But obviously I need to fix that typo. And perhaps we can get things a little bit better. So here we go. I'm doing some smaller S turns to try and kill my velocity. The air brakes on the vertical stabilizer, the rudder, do not actually work on this model right now. They, they, I think, work in 1.8.1, actually. So that's fixed there, but it wasn't fixed here. So I couldn't use those. So I generally wiggle around in order to kill speed to land, and we touch down safely. So good times. After a very brief check of the map where we ended up, right there, I recover a vessel, and we move on to the next thing which actually took a lot of tries. This is launching Poisk on the Soyuz U, and it's been a while since we launched something uh, from Russia to add to the station. And it turned out that my launch script for the Soyuz U wasn't timed quite right. And especially when we came to the hot staging and the separation of the core stage, uh, the core stage kept bumping into the second stage because it was separated a little bit too early. and. It will still actually be separated too early on this launch, but the second stage will survive this time. <laughs> so we managed to make it that way. Uh, we also, one time trying to launch Poisk, didn't have enough RCS thrusters, so it couldn't maneuver properly. So I had to add a few extra ones. There they were thrusters called Russian thruster block or something like that, and they were appropriate for the use but we just didn't have them on the base model. So Poisk is on top of basically the progress. Oh, here's the hot staging and then the slight bump that the first stage gives to the second stage there. I call it first stage and second stage. I know it's sometimes referred uh, as the boosters being the first stage and the core being the second stage, but I treat boosters universally as a zeroth stage. Anyway, here we are making orbit, but you can see uh, Poisk on top of a progress service module is what we have here and those are the extra thruster blocks I placed and we are approaching the station. So Poisk is a docking module. It's also referred to as MRM-2. The progress was a special progress M-MIM2. It was still really hard to dock with this and that's mainly because the thrusters that push us forward are really, really weak. I guess maybe they expect us to use the main engine, but the thrusters to push us forward were so weak that they never settled, well, they had trouble settling the fuel down on the main engine, which is only like a two kilonewton engine or something like that. But 
its fuel was always unsettled because the forward-facing thrusters didn't settle the fuel down well enough. Uh, so yeah, it was a little bit of a pain to use that thing. And in the future, I'll be adding supplementary forward-facing, uh, forward-pushing thrusters uh, to fix that problem. We will be docking further progresses and Soyuzes and all to this, so I want to make sure everything works out properly for that. Uh, is my plan uh, down the road to use this International Space Station to simulate further space station events, you know, current events and that sort of thing. We'll see if that works out, if people are interested in that. But yeah, that's the plan. So here we go, STS-130, the Shuttle Endeavour. I should mention that we are skipping over a shuttle launch, that's STS-127 with the Kibo Exposed Facility. As already mentioned, that's because I didn't have a ready model of the Exposed Facility yet, and I will for the next video, so I'll do that just out of order. So here we go, shuttle launch. We've seen a few of these, though not always so silently. One renovation possibility for this space station is to remove the modules that are problematic in 1.8.1 and use the NASA ISS model to replace those modules. Um, Model-wise, that's easy. It's the textures that are a little bit of a pain for that, so we will see if that works out. But yeah, I'll think about that to import the ISS into a newer version, then hopefully we won't have so much lag when the shuttle launches in that case. That is a great wish of mine. So the other thing is I'll have to figure out how to fix uh, the Kerbal Constructs launch pad. We have that nice launch pad in here for real KSC that doesn't appear quite right in 1.8.1. So that's another complication. Yep, trying to get things to work. I still haven't brought the shuttle down uh, well enough in 1.8.1. That's still something I'm working on. I understand other people are working on the configurations for the space shuttle in 1.8.1 as well, and we'll see what happens with that. In addition to ISS related stuff, I also have some models like the, uh, the shuttle's cradle that is used for the PAMD satellites. Uh, I show that in my STS 41B and 51A videos and uh, also the satellites that go with those, the bigger tub satellites and the smaller tub satellites. I have some of those models that will be relevant to shuttle missions, and I could make some of the other shuttle payloads as well. So if it turns out that we can get stuff working right in 1.8.1, making some of the other shuttle payloads will be a thing that I'll try to do. But uh, here we go, uh, docking, STS-130, the shuttle Endeavour to the International Space Station with a nice sun in the background there. And connection. We are all docked up. So, uh, Tranquility and the Cupola, this takes a couple of steps because the Cupola is on the wrong side of Tranquility. In order to fit in the bay, it actually needs to be on the bottom of Tranquility, not on that particular port. So first we'll have to dock uh, Tranquility to the station and then we're going to have to move the cupola to its correct docking port. Then there's actually a whole bunch of business with an, the other PMA, which I won't get to in this episode. I think it was on this mission that they were supposed to move the PMA, but I forgot to do it. Let me just double check that. So yeah, PMA3 uh, was already moved in order to make room for the Tranquility node, uh, which was at, uh, for this mission. But then it's going to be moved again to a port location on Tranquility. But I won't do that uh, in this mission as it was supposed to have happened. I'll do that later. And then it has to be moved to Harmony, which is where it ends up and where we see that. Of course, you guys have already seen the end result of all of this if you watched my uh, DM2 video. Uh, like I said, I've already finished constructing the space station. This is the uh, space station that I used for the DM2 video for SpaceX's second demonstration mission. So uh, we've got Tranquility on and we're grabbing the cupola. I tried to grab the cupola with just one drone, but that wasn't the easiest thing to handle. The cupola is 4 tons, the drone's only 0.5. So with the RCS ports on one side, it's very unwieldy. And ultimately, this uh, gets me to make 
my own custom model of the Canada tug uh, with a Canada flag on it too. So on the final missions with the shuttle, I'll be using that model of the little tug. It has some other benefits. First of all, I have to deactivate these RCS ports once they're in the shuttle bay and I have to go around clicking all four of them. I also have to activate them when they deploy from the shuttle bay. So I have to go around clicking all four of them. With my own custom model, I only have to activate or deactivate the thrusters once because they're all built into the same body. And also I made extendable RCS ports for the first time. So I'm glad that is a doable thing. And so I knew it was a doable thing from other models uh, like stock extensions has extendable RCS booms, but uh, this would be the first time I was doing it. And yeah, so we will see those in the next episode. All right, so the tugs are back in and the shuttle departs. So after this, uh, for the major modules, all that we have left is Rasfit and Leonardo. And then to prepare for DM2, I had to add beam. And uh, I used the Keem mod for that, but I lightened the textures a little bit and of course resized it to its appropriate size. And we also had to place uh, two progresses and one Soyuz and one HTV. So that all had to be done to make sure the station was in its proper configuration. We have a, a progress on the tail there already, and that was to uh, help boost the station to a better orbit, but that progress has a bit of a flaw. It didn't have any solar panels, and we had actually launched that on, as a test on a, Titan, a commercial Titan III by Radernick. That's now part of his U.S. Rockets pack. So uh, in order to test the commercial Titan III, I launched a progress on it without solar panels. It's, yeah, it was just what was handy at the time. So, yeah, but that will be removed and replaced with uh, better progress. So here we are approaching the Florida coast and I mistimed our re-entry timing. So you can see we're very far north of Tampa Bay. So we're obviously missing where we need to be. We're headed more to Fort Lauderdale than to Cape Canaveral. Also, I realized there was another problem. I hadn't fixed a typo from the earlier mission from STS-119. So I aborted the re-entry script and took manual control early before it could knock us off. Still, you see the yaw problem, but um, I was able to hold the nose up a little bit longer and try to turn towards Cape Canaveral. I was pointing at Cape Canaveral right there uh, to indicate the location of where we need to go, but there's no way the shuttle can't cover that kind of ground at this point. Um, it can't even turn very well. As you can see, I'm desperately trying to turn the shell, pulling G's all over the place, but the prograde vector just won't come along with me on this. It's got too much momentum in one direction. It can't turn like this uh, at this point in the atmosphere. So ultimately, and you can see our location there, I decide that we should just turn towards the coast because we just didn't have enough energy to get back to Cape Canaveral, as we are, of course, gliding. And so we need to keep in mind what energy we've got to use. And so I was just satisfied to try and get back to the coast and land on land instead of water. So here we go, uh, trying to reduce speed by turning as usual and touching down, at least in Florida. So getting back to land twice this episode, but not quite where I need to be. Next episode, we'll do a better job as I fixed typo. After that, it's mainly a matter of making sure I get the re-entry timing right. We need to make sure we end up in line with Cape Canaveral on the way back. If it's just a minute or two off, because we get into different orbits along the way, right? We get into one orbit when we uh, start out, then we raise our orbit to rendezvous, and then we get into the station's orbit, and then we get into a lower orbit. It's all complicated. Anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.